Hi again and welcome to module 4, lecture 2 in microbiological risk assessment. Uh, my name is Håkan Vigre and the material I will present here is again developed together with my colleague Martin Nauta. The focus in this lecture is exposure assessment. After this lecture you will be able to describe the different steps in exposure assessment performed in microbiological risk assessment. You will also be able to explain the concept farm to forking exposure assessment and why we are using that. You will be able to give examples of typical outputs from exposure assessment and explain the differences between qualitative and quantitative risk assessment. And in the end you will also be able to explain why we are focusing on exposure assessment in uh, microbiological risk assessment. If we look at this uh, picture again, we are now moving from, we know which hazard we are going to work with and we are now going to work with exposure assessment in the risk assessment. So, and the aim of the exposure assessment is to predict the number of microorganisms in the food item just at consumption. So now we are focusing on the food item. And the overall problem we have in um, microbiological risk assessment is that the bacteria is alive. They can grow and we can try to kill them. And the aim of the exposure assessment is to describe what is happening with the pathogen along the production line. So we have the same production line as before and here we have now a model uh, explained by a line where we have a decrease, increase, increase, decrease. And this describes what is going on with the pathogen along the production line. You have to ask <coughs> yourself some questions when you develop this exposure assessment. First of all, you have to figure out <coughs> what is the food pathway. You need to describe how the food item you are working with is produced. And it's always end at the consumption. But where you start your production line depends on the question you are going to work with in a risk assessment. You can start from the very beginning or you can start in the middle of a production line but the end is always the end product at consumption. You also need to ask uh, yourself where does the pathogen enter the pathway? Does it enter with the food to the, in this case, to the pigs or does it enter during the production of the sausages? And then after you have the entering of the pathogen, you need to describe what's going on with the pathogen. Does it survive and multiply on its way to the time of consumption? And do we have processes in the production where we reduce the amount of pathogens in the product. And the end, pro end result will be the number of CFUs per serving. And the exposure is per serving. We don't accumulate pathogens in our body, so to say. So the, the dose is one go. This is a more schematic illustration of the food pathway. Uh, and I always use it myself in the beginning just yes, to make sure I get around all the possible uh, entering uh, of the pathogen. So here we start with the feed ingredients, then we go to feed, animal farm, slaughterhouse, if we're talking about uh, meat products, cutting and production plant, wholesale, retail, and also the consumer. What do the consumer do with the product in the home kitchen? And we model the exposure under normal circumstances. <coughs> So we are not taking into account how many people that breaks the law or make really, really stupid things at home. Uh, the model is about normal circumstances. And the questions as I outlined before, where does the hazard enter the food? What is the end of the pathway? And which step in the pathway influence the number of pathogens at consumption? Do we have growth or inactivation? There are two approaches to estimate exposure. Uh, the same picture as before, now we only look at the concentration, number of CFU in the raw materials on the sausage. Um, and we can express the amount of exposure either in words saying that there is a small amount of salmonella in the serving. We can also express it in numbers that there are 10 salmonella in the serving. Uh, and there is a quite big difference between these uh, statements here. Uh, if we go to the definition, we have the qualitative assess assessment where we provide verbal expressions of the amount of pathogens in the serving. 
and we have a quantitative assessment where we provide numerical expression of the amount of patches in the serving. I will now show <coughs> an example of how we use the qualitative and the qualita quantitative uh, assessment. Here we have a very short pathway where we start somewhere in the production and then we have a storage at 5 degrees for 14 days and after that we have a heat treatment before consumption. We have an initial concentration and in this case in the qualitative risk uh, exposure assessment we have a medium concentration. We store it at 5 degrees for 14 days, we have growth and after storage we have high concentration because we have an increase in the amount of CFUs in the product. Then we have a heat treatment and heat treatment has a strong effect, a strong reduction effect. So after heat treatment, so yes that consumption, we have a low concentration again. So this was a qualitative expression of the amount of CFUs in the product at consumption. If we now go to the quantitative exposure assessment, we have the same pathway. But now we try to express the, the concentration in numbers, so it's quantitative. And here we assume that we have a concentration before storage of 0.5 lux per gram. Then we use predictive modeling to, to figure out what is going to happen during storage at 5 degrees for 14 days. And according to the predictive model we have plus 2.5 lux in multiplication. It means that we have 3 lux CFUs after storage. Then we have a heat treatment. We, then we have minus 2 lux and in the end it ends up with 1 lux CFU per gram. And then if you assume that the portion size is 150 gram, you can calculate the total number of CFUs in the serving. In this case, it will be 1,500 CFUs. The strength with quantitative exposure assessment is that it's easier to communicate, but it's much tougher to perform. You need much more information and more mathematical skills. What you can do is also to run ex alternative scenarios. And here I will show an example on that, how we just change the storage from 14 days to 7 days. That's the only difference we have in this and the previous example. So we start with the same concentration, but due to shorter storage time, we will just have one log multiplication. The same, and then it means we have 1.5 logs after storage. Same heat treatment, and it ends up to a minus 0.5 log CFU per gram. And then you can calculate the total exposure at consumption. And in this case it will be 50 CFUs compared to the, other, the previous example with 1,500 CFUs. The complexity of the exposure assessment, the pathway you build, depends very much on what you're trying to answer and how complicated the pathway is. <clears throat> you can do it very simple where you just say that we have a a certain uh, increase or decrease in the concentration. But you can also develop models that are very complicated. For instance, the question you are working with can be what can we do at the slaughter line to reduce the concentration? What does it mean to change the temperature? What does it mean to change the cleaning procedure? And then you need to build very detailed mechanistic models at different steps. And then that complicated the model much more. But the most important thing when we model things is to make them at a level so it fits for purpose. Don't overdo your modeling and your risk assessment. Try to answer the questions you have, not more. And the reason why we're focusing on the exposure assessment is because we can do things at the, expo uh, at the production line. We can actually reduce the amount of uh, pathogens in, uh, in the product. After we consume the product, we have no influence of what's going to happen in the consumer. So if we want to change the risk for the consumer, we have to do it in the production line. So short say, in microbiological food safety, we have opportunity to influence the amount of pathogens during production. If you read uh, um, microbiological risk assessment uh, done at a very high level, you very often say that they are based on mathematics. Uh, and the reason for that is that mathematical modeling makes it possible to integrate the variability uh, of the situation and the uncertainty we have about different parameters. As I mentioned in the first lecture, 
one of the power with risk assessment is that you, into, you take into account the lack of knowledge. And lack of knowledge is the same as uncertainty. So by mathematical modeling, you can actually start to measuring the size of the uncertainty. And that's why we use mathematics as a tool to do risk assessment. And here I just have two pictures illustrating that. Uh, here I have an illustration of the variability in concentration because that's very often the situation. And here I, I just have uh, uh, showing a figure that the concentration can range from zero logs to seven logs with a difference probability. So most of the servings has a very low concentration and some of the serving has a very high concentration. And this is very good to take into account because then you have a realistic picture of the situation. And these are of course the most risky servings, so to say. We can also express the uncertainty, for instance in the prevalence, we are not certain about the prevalence, and then you can take that in uncertainty into account in the estimate. And this graph here just illustrates, here we have the prevalence on the horizontal axis, and the height illustrates the probability of different prevalences. So we see that the most likely prevalence is 10%, but it can range up to 40 or 50%. So uncertainty should be integrated in the output of the exposure assessment. And here I have two examples. The first line is about the qualitative exposure assessment. And here it states that the proportion of sausages that are contaminated is low. However, I'm not so sure it can also be medium. And here we have a low and we also have the expression about uncertainty that it can go to medium. And then in the second example here, we have the proportion of sausages that are contaminated is 1 out of 10,000 sausages. So here we have numerical expressions. It means that it's a quantitative exposure assessment. However, when taking uncertainty into account, it could be between 1 per 1,000 sausages and 1 per 100,000 sausages. The variability should also be integrated in the exposure assessment, and it's very often the variability in the concentration. And here I have to add that the number of salmonella in contaminated sausages range from almost nothing to high. That's a verbal expression of the variation in concentration. And we can also express that uh, by the number of salmonella in contaminated sausages range from 1 to 1,000 CFUs. And that's a numerical expression. This was the last slide for this presentation about exposure assessment. Thank you for watching.